to touch on what Anthony said that, what would you say, Does it, it's just one or something like that? Does one make a difference? I think something like that, yeah. Do you think, <laughs> really? can you answer your own question though? Um, I don't think one can just make a difference. I mean, if you're making, if you do just approach one guy, hey, you need to pull your pants up, that's not really gonna change the whole culture, not gonna really change the whole population. And then they, what, <coughs> I'm talking about it's, it's not just the media, they go home and it's the social norm. They see it in their communities. It's, it's everywhere. That's what I'm saying. Right? I think one person can make a difference because if you tell that guy to pull his pants up and maybe he notices why, then that guy, and once he, you know, figures out why you told him to pull his pants up, then, you know, the importance of it, then he's going to go and tell people other people. And then, right. You know, it spreads that way. Exactly. Pay for it. Come on, man. I'm going to ask you a question. Be honest with me, you can go to what's right now and say, hey, he has to understand why. That's that's why that's why I say he has to understand why. If he doesn't, then I guess he's gonna be receptive. To that. But what's wrong with you telling him? You know? sure. yeah. I agree, Taylor. My thing is though, if say he does then pull his pants up, that's with someone like me who doesn't see that, then then I don't see his pants on the ground. Then that makes me feel better of him. Like that's gonna change other people's opinions. Might not change his, but for other people around not to have to see that, then we're not gonna be thinking. Lauren? I was going to say that um, one voice really does make a difference too because the more you speak up, then the more they'll realize, hey, I should, I should really listen to what you're saying. You should take the word that one out. It doesn't necessarily <laughs> have to be one that makes a difference, but it starts with one. It starts with that one person. So it's just like um, all the individuals that's, that fought back, Nat Turner, Marcus Garvey, Elijah Muhammad, it started with that one individual. No, they didn't make change on their own, but it started with one. And then that's how you make progress. Um, I just want to share a story. Um, I was just coming from the gym with my best friend, he has to be white. We're walking, we're all juiced up on supplements. And, um, I see this white guy, and he's sagging. His jeans are like to his knees. And, um, which one, which one of us yelled, hey, you need to pull your pants up. And then he turns around, he's like, what'd you say? You know, about to fight us. And I'm like, oh my God. So, I mean, <laughs> people aren't really going to be receptive of you telling them what to do. But at that moment, you stand your ground yeah. and you educate them. I'm asking you, why I should pull your pants? How should I respect you? So. It's like when you say something when someone's making a racist or sexist joke. You may not, you know change their whole perception on racism or sexism, but you're at least shaming them and, you know, not even necessarily shaming them, but pointing out to them that you're not going to tolerate that behavior from them. And right. they'll definitely remember that, like... Yeah, it makes people aware. <laughs> well, all right, our, just recently I heard a great quote, um, pretty much stated that not one man has ever saved the world, so save yourself. Gandhi actually also said that um, each one of us individually can't make a, you know, can't change the world, but yet we must do it anyway, meaning that when you look at social movements, like you guys have all heard probably the news about Occupy Wall Street, you know, that was one person's idea that everybody starts picking up on, but if it wasn't for each individual committing to go and do those marches, there wouldn't be a movement, right? So any movement is made up of individuals deciding to participate in it. Right now, yep. And actually they're camping out at the courthouse square in downtown Dayton. You can go by and just support them for an hour and give them some food or hang out with them. Go camp out. Jay Z. Yeah. Nah, that was Jay Z. I'm, I'm giving him credit for that one. I'm sorry, I'm giving, I'm giving him credit for that one. Because he said it, and what happened? Nobody was wearing the next day. So we can say it faded out, 
Nobody was wearing them. They don't fit up that fast. No, I, I had a few jerseys. So. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I mean, the same for snapbacks. I mean, there's something oh, yeah, for snapbacks. Not everybody wears snapbacks. Mm -hmm. right. For the snapbacks back. <laughs> <laughs> I don't talk to anybody. Your Omar, I'm skipping you. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I just Say that 
oh, this one's, yeah, that's a good black person. Or this one, this is like the evil type black person. You just need to be one, again, as a whole. See blacks as a whole, not just separate or subgrouping blacks. Oh, I agree. I mean, same old. I know, I think in the last video that we watched with the Hennessy <coughs> shirt, he had said something about the yellow backs and that they're not worth nothing, cowards, I guess. And I thought about that, like, you know, the young black men or young black women to make it out of that. I wonder if that's who they're talking about, like cowards, sellouts, you know, rapping about that. And then that even degrades that, you know, like moving on, moving forward. Yeah. I mean, just, you know, kind of just touch on that. My mom's from the Bronx, lived in the projects, grew up. I mean, now she's working on a doctor's degree, you know what I mean? There's two kids on her own type of thing, so. You know I mean? We have these ideas that, you know, these people want to purchase ideas that, you know, if you stay here, you're a man, or if you stay here, you still want the people. They don't even live there. That's the thing we got to think about, because you can't be fooled by the open door. You can't be misled by this false reality. These people rock about the hood, but don't live in the hood. Mm -hmm. It's like what they say in ATL, that movie, it's in ATL. You can have the, what do you say? You can have the, uh, just in the hallway, you can give me the Picasso or something like that. It's the same thing. You, know, if you want to justify living there, you can keep all that. But me, I want the nice paintings on the wall. I want the 72 inch flat screen on my teeth on my wall or something like that. I'm almost there. You got a 46, so you know. Um, but yeah, so it's just this thing, like, if we move from it or move away from it, I think we can start, you know, like I said, we start to create this new reality, or actually a truth within ourselves, instead of believing this false reality that's been created so many decades ago.